Problematic Neutrality. This is a lecture for the Worldviews and Nordic Society module by me, Andrew Thomas, at S4 University College, and I want you to watch by Thursday, the 22nd of November, which is in just two days. I do apologise. Um, so there's a story that tells us a little bit about the um, about the problem of teaching many religions um, in, um, in a neutral way. And it goes like this. Um, there was a guy in the evening um, found in the town square um, just calling around and, and brushing through the dust and a policeman comes up to him and says um, excuse me sir is, is there a problem how can I help you is there something wrong and the guy says I've lost my keys I can't find them anywhere and the, and the policeman thinks oh that's a problem so he looks around he can't see anything either so they and they spend some time looking around and he says well where were you when you last had them I lost them in my house. Well, why are you looking in the town square? The light is better. And the reason I tell you this rather foolish story is that um, a lot of um, pupils in my in my experience in religious studies classrooms mix up the um, the academic and scientific um, validity of certain points of view about religion with what is a convenient um, place. Uh, from which to have a conversation. Safe spaces are not always um, the true spaces. It's, and and a lot of things that we can say about religion, um, they will make for a very good dialogue maybe, um, but they're not necessarily true, or certainly they're not necessarily recognized by all, um, by all religious communities. A lot of um, peaceful and neutral ways of teaching uh, religious studies or different religions um, are also really specific places to stand and the places to stand outside those religions and if you're asking pupils to ask to, um, to stand outside that religion you're asking to leave that religion or, or actually um, agree on something or take something as a starting point for a religious lesson which their religion does not agree with so let's go through some of these i'll try and make it more <laughs> more concrete and less complicated um, than it was the first one we're going to look at is uh, private religion religion is a private matter now the whole idea that religion should be a private uh, matter is probably really good if you're thinking about human rights and the fact that states should not discriminate against people of particular religions. But if your religion, your particular religion, uh, involves being public and being political and actually taking part in the society, just like, for example, Islam does with its, um, with its over um, political appeal, then you can't practice it and still keep it private. In fact, many people would argue that almost all religions have a political dimension to them. And you can't just do pol politics in a private way. It strikes me that this is a this is a this is a rule. This is a principle about what religion is, which is based on um, on on one particular idea. Well, certainly it certainly affects different religions in different ways, and they're going to be in, affected in different matters. In actual fact, if it is true that almost all religions have political issues, and almost all religions have these um, open and public expressions that need to be made then maybe this is just a definition designed to get somebody out of going to Sunday school. By the way, don't try this at home, kids. So private religion, the idea that um, all religion is a private matter and shouldn't be discussed in public or shouldn't have any public consequences, is radically at odds with particular religions' idea of what true religion is and should be. Now, similarly, we've got this issue of um, all religions should be uh, should be tolerated, and um, uh, and um, yes. So the idea is that religion is something that we uh, should be um, should be making um, maybe making allowances for, but certainly shouldn't be um, living our lives, our public lives, in such a way that it rules out particular religions. Now, notice that some things we are talking we talk about in terms of zero tolerance. <coughs> Most schools have a zero tolerance attitude to bullying. Um, but religion is something which should be tolerated. The word tolerate does actually distribute um, values. It doesn't make any absolutes. So, um, so this thing that re other religions should be tolerated is um, is again this um, idea that religions are perhaps 
slightly they're not so important as to um, build our society on the basis of for example the value of the dollar or the value of the crown um, is something you can base your um, your society on and again that's a choice uh, and many religions and many um, societies in the past have actually built their society on the idea that well once you abandon religion you abandon all idea of um, of how we can be together and why we should actually um, be kind to each other in actual fact it was right up until the 1800s that, every, that most people thought it was ridiculous to expect a society to work unless people actually believed in an afterlife it's not just a question of god it's an afterlife because that was something that had real um, social effect so that religions need to be tolerated is a religion um, is, is a specific worldview which is not shared by all religions and certainly not shared by all people let's move on because those tomatoes were getting a little bit uh, a little bit much the idea of crit critical distance and the idea of distancing see yourself from a religion like using your own critical sense to turn it back on the religion which is actually your source of uh, insight and wisdom is actually very foreign to almost all religions um, when this idea was launched in the in the 1800s um, in, in, a, in a kind of critical way in universities for example it was a unique phenomenon lots of people have been studying critically before or been thinking historically about religious texts before but they haven't really critically text, um, studied it on a, in the same kind of institutions that you critically study a liver or something like that and that was and that's quite a foreign thing it certainly was in the 1800s so it's only natural that it should be a foreign thing for other religions as well which weren't going through the European university revolution in the 1800s so the idea of critical um, study of, uh, of Bibles has actually been taught and tearing Christianity apart in, um, for many decades um, and has been one of the crucial uh, crucial um, aspects of the debate about homosexuality or women priests or divorcees or whatever. Um, so it seems something which has been such a divisive issue in one individual religion, and of course it's had similar div divisive effects in Judaism, and, um, and, and it's only now that you get certain people who are, um, who are daring to critically um, interpret and historically investigate the text of the Quran. It seems weird to expect that kind of value to be a unifying value within the sphere of religious studies. So critical distance towards a religious text is definitely not going to, um, going to unite the entire classroom. Quite the opposite, it's going to cause fireworks. Now, until now, we've mostly been talking about um, about ideas which have been, they've had a certain amount of secularism um, within them. Um, and and we can actually track some of these ideas in keeping with the rise of secularism in, in Europe. But here's one that actually is religion specific, not just a particular kind of religion, but the religions of Sikhism and um, Hinduism. They um, they will they actually believe something like this. All religion contains a grain of truth. Uh, they have a universalistic view of religions and um, or relativist view of religions, depending on how you actually interpret that sentence. Point being. Um, if we use this idea, all religion contains a grain of truth um, that everybody should be able to learn from, uh, which I think is a, is a, is a brilliant idea and a, and, and a lot of religious studies teachers do actually um, um, believe and use as a basis for their teaching. But if you do so, then you are not just having a neutral or embracing a neutral view on religion. You are actually embracing a view on religion which, favor, uh, which favors particular religious points of view. So, in other words, Sikhs and Hindus are definitely going to love you for saying this in the, in the, in the classroom, whereas other religions perhaps won't. And, um, and certainly um, there is a certain naivety in it if you think that, um, if you think that all religions contain, contain truth and are completely, um, that they can be complementary with each other. You can't have religions where one person says X and the other person says not X and just say that they're saying the same thing. All right, so the point is we've got um, all kinds of views of religion, and these are maybe convenient views of religion, uh, which will allow us to study religion in um, a peaceful and stress-free way. But they're not necessarily scientific founded, and, and even, if, even when they are scientifically founded, they're not neutral. Some religions and some branches of individual religions and some, um, some personality types, even we could say, um, are going to be more favoured by particular stances on religion. So instead of creating this idea of we'll live, uh, we'll live peacefully from a neutral, um, everybody agrees, a view on religion, a, a religious, um, religious science um, finding or religious science um, 
um, methodological standing standpoint, it is possible that we could ask all the religions to develop their own theologies of peace. In actual fact, almost all religions would actually say that they are a religion of peace. So why not maximize on that? And, the, and it's that kind of strategy that we will talk about in the classroom. Why um, Norway is a society that in many ways is pro-religion. Um, it wants to support religion and it wants to see religious peace, but on the religion's own premises. We'll discuss, discuss whether that is actually a good description of Norway and whether it's a good idea in classroom.